Hello and welcome to Pop Along RC and it's finally time to get inside the box of the Fiat Arbath 1000 TCR Bellina Corsa. Now this car as I said in previous videos is one that I've wanted to get on the channel ever since I saw it was being released. Uh, this could potentially be the future of my M chassis racing for the for the next year or so. So uh, let's start with the shell, which is a great looking shell. Thing is, what am I going to do with this shell? The options I've got: I could paint it in pop along colours. I could do more of a sort of box art livery, or I could go with a sort of a rusty look to it, being that these cars were around a long time ago and cars liked to rust back then, we could actually have uh, quite a lot of rust effect on this car and make it look a little bit more interesting in that way. I don't know, put it in the comments down below, what would you like me to uh, do with this? So next up we have the manual, um, again like all Tamiya manuals it's pretty straightforward stuff. So first we have a nice bag there, this one has got some pretty solid looking steering uprights, um, again for racing I'm not sure how that's going to go. I'm not sure how long that's going to last either. So it might be that I'll make this shell up really nice and then opt to um, change it over to a mini because that's obviously my favorite car and keep this one as a bit of a shelf queen. So we shall see. And next up we have this sprue and this is the one that I'm interested in. This is the one which will dictate how many different types of gears and things you will be able to run um, and I think it is going to be quite limited to be honest. Next up we've got the two part chassis, friction dampers, some bumpers, some suspension arms, we've then got our outdrives So the ESC that's come with this kit is, so we've got there a THW 1060R and then we have the last bag which has all our bits in. So we've got all our gears there, diffs, bits and bobs, there's a motor there which looks like a standard silver can motor. I think that runs at about 27 turn normally, so uh, the torque tune is about 25, the sports tune is about 23, so yeah. Uh, the last thing, which is quite interesting actually, is the wheels. So we've got um, two sets of hubs, like so, however, the tyres that come on this car are different, so we have got... A bigger set that go on the back and these low profile tyres to go on the front. Okay so now we can see everything out of its bags laid out on the table ready to start building. Obviously we've got the chassis here that actually comes as a two part chassis um, and these holes here allow you to change the length so you've got three different lengths of chassis that you can run which is really cool. Um, as I was saying earlier this here is going to be quite restrictive with gearing for this car and the spur gear that it actually comes with is a massive 65 tooth uh, spur gear. Plastic gears inside the diff. What else have we got that's worth mentioning? So in a Tamiya kit things that you don't get, um, you will not get a servo so I've got an e-tronic servo there that is the ET 2070 um, I've got a receiver so I can link it to my radio gear 
And I've also got myself a set of bearings from rcbearings.co.uk. Um, they've got bearings for all sorts of kits, um, so do check them out. Enough waffle, let's get building. Okay then, so for those of you that aren't aware with the MB01, what is unique about this car is that it can be built in multiple ways. I've mentioned already that you can have three lengths of chassis, but it also can be built as a front wheel drive or a rear wheel drive car. Now what I'm doing here is following through step by step as it is in the manual, and that's gonna leave me with a rear wheel drive car. However, I intend to race this and I want to race it as a front wheel drive car, therefore I will be showing you exactly what you need to do to change it afterwards. So the first few bits basically setting up the base of the chassis and then on to the diff. I believe this is uh, the same plastic diff gears and the same diff housing that you'd find in a TTO2. So if you've worked on a TTO2 before, this will seem very familiar. Um, with regards um, diff oil, ideally I think for this, for racing, I'd like to use the AW grease. Unfortunately, I've not got any AW grease in at the moment, so I'm using this Core RC diff putty, which is, as you can see, quite sticky, quite thick. And what it'll do is give me quite a nice diff action on the car. Um, for most race classes that I run in, I would not be able to knock up this diff. Um, I've just put in the uh, outdrives there just to check, test the diff action before continuing on with the build. This little bit here uh, is a little bit fiddly trying to get in these little bars, especially this one here. But what happens is once you've found it um, and you've got it set inside, um, you just push down the plastic bit on the end and then there is a black c-clip as you can see here which clips over the top and seals it in place so that can't come out um, and this is a nice little nice little design really quite like it so on go the bearings that i've got um, from rcbearings.co.uk as i say in the original uh, box you would get some bra spaces that go there um, so I packed out the diff a little bit too much, so you can see there's a little bit of leakage of um, grease on the outside of those gears. But this goes to go together really nicely, and uh, yeah, really, really nice design. So I've put the motor in, as you can see in the centre of the car there. I have, I was actually um, sort of curious as to how difficult it is to change the pinion if need be. And since building the car, it's literally two screws, and it takes that whole centre piece out so it is quite um, an easy thing to do so as you can see there the front goes together quite nicely um, the little black washers I've opted to take out actually because I wanted the front end to move freely and I found it was sticking a little bit with the, the rubber washer in the little o-ring I, I may live to regret that later on but in the mean, initially, I'm going to stick with what I have got. As I say, this is being set up um, rear wheel drive at the moment. And that is the bottom of the chassis, just to show you how it all sort of looks under there. Really nice design, this chassis. Really pleased with how it looks. Um, Next thing was putting the servo in, so I've obviously got my servo checker here where I can sort of test that the servo is working and I can get it centred up without having to wire up the whole car. I can simply push the middle button and it centres it for me.
really starting to look good now. You see that really long arm on the steering, that's because um, this is rear wheel drive, so the motor situated at the back of the car, uh, drive going into the rear wheels, and then the, the uh, long arm is steering the wheels up at the front. Um, and that is pretty much it. So in order to um, make it into a front wheel drive, there are a few things that you need to change. So obviously I need to be steering the wheels cl closest to the servo. Therefore, I'll take off the posts with the uh, body posts from the two towers and switch them over. And then I need to get the shorter link so that I can link the servo to the steering arm. When you're doing this, um, you also have to rotate the servo 180 degrees just to give you the space in order to do that. Um, one last thing that you need to do then is undo two screws at the front. There's another two screws underneath the chassis you need to undo. And what that allows you to do is pop the front off there and you can take the diff out, rotate it um, 180 degrees, and pop it back in so that just reverses the drive on the diff and that is put simply is how you convert it from a rear wheel drive to a front wheel drive so there's not really much to it.